So what do you do if you have bad water quality or maybe algae in the water? Uh, of course you need to increase the, the oxygen in the, in the water by adding waterfalls or filters and water outlets. Uh, in this video I'm going to show the, the solution I've made for adding sensors to measure this into my uh, Sieve filter. Here is my setup for the water, measuring the water quality of the of the pond, and it's centered around um, Atlas Scientific sensors. So you have these different boards. I have uh, temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen, ORP, and electric, electrical conductivity. And uh, I mean, I think the most interesting ones are the temperature, pH, and the ORP ones. Uh, at least from from telling how if there is any any uh, too much debris in the in the pond or what kind of water quality I have at the moment. Um, I'm using this carrier board from uh, white box. It's called uh, T Tentacle T1 Mark II. And uh, it's an excellent board uh, that is this one is specifically designed for the Arduino Uno. But I mean, it's standard if, if you add one of the uh, of the PCBs that you and then you can mount any kind of microchip on it if you want to. Uh, and there's also one for, for Raspberry Pis. I wanted this one because uh, I think I, I'm going to connect this one over serial port uh, or the USB uh, to my uh, Raspberry Pi. And then it's easy to just do onboard editing and, and upload no, new firmware and so on all in one go. So, so that's why I think that this, uh, this is the most convenient setup. Uh, so this, I'm, and then I've done a, a model for this, a, a, a small box, and uh, it is uh, exposing the serial port and the, and the power, and then also the, the places where you have the uh, input for the, for the sensors. And I have one lid then that is just uh, plain black, and then I've got one where you can glue a, a piece of plexiglass so I just cut a piece of, of, uh, of plexiglass here uh, and that is to see the status indication of the of the different uh, sensors here as they will light up or if there is any errors that will be also there will be a visual indication of that on the on the boards uh, so it's not by all means any there's no waterproofing or anything like that it's just uh, protecting the PCBs a bit more and then you can, I mean, if you want to, you can screw it on, screw in a wall on, or uh, in my case, I'm just going to have it lying around in, uh, in, the, in the box where I have uh, the, my electronics out in the pond. So it's enough. There are these uh, mounting places for the PCB. So I've just added two screws and this one is really yeah, stuck here. So you don't have to have all four. Um, and then you just place this... Um, uh, carrier board on on top like so and uh, add two screws here Like that, and um, then you, can you, I will use this one, and uh, uh, I've just um, added these kind of uh, M3 inserts, threaded inserts that you uh, just glue or uh, melt down into the to the plastic. So four of those, and then just standard M3 to uh, to close this one. Uh, but again, as you see, I mean, there's it's not so like it's water sealed or anything like that, or waterproof in any way. Um, but yeah, that's the to protect the the, the sensor uh, devices here. Uh, and then on to the actual sensors. Let's see if I will shift here. Uh, so here is first one RTD probe, a temperature probe, and um, I've also done these these. Uh, models here to uh, to mount this and uh, this is to get a good 
uh, some of the sensors here are sensitive to have enough water flow uh, to it. So either you need to, to mount it in your, your pipe systems for the, for the filters, or you can um, put it in kind of a, a I have Sieva filters, uh, which I will show uh, later in the, the setup, but this one is something that then fits into the filter system, that, so it gets in contact with the water and still have a steady flow through the, um, uh, through the sensors here. So you can start by just adding the, the temperature and then you just add the sensors here. And um, let's see. like that. So you get this uh, mounting that is uh, clamping the, the sensors so they're not going anywhere. Uh, and um, then it, this is just going to be um, mounted uh, hanging on top of the of the CV filter. So here is the CV filter and as you can see it was easy to hide the cables. And the main reason for, for this kind of mounting is that uh, some of the sensors uh, here, uh, they, they need to have a steady uh, water flow. So either in the, the tubes that you have for your filter or, or here inside uh, something like a CV filter is, uh, is optimal, I think. Um, and yeah, it's easy to access them and, um, and uh, just, just clamp them here in, um, with this, this model and uh, fit it right back in the in the CV filter. So here are the electronics or how I store that in a cement pot and uh, here's the tentacle T1 and you can see the blinking LEDs there that it's reading continuously. Easy to get the cables in from the CV filter and uh, here's the water control with the Raspberry Pi and uh, the other stuff that is, uh, yeah, it's not, it's a lot of cords in down in here, but uh, it's quite easy to get access to it at least. For the programming of the water quality, so the the Arduino Uno uh, firmware, uh, I'm actually using this directly from from the Raspberry Pi. So uh, on that Raspberry Pi, I also have the development environment where I can program the different. Uh, uh, the different uh, boards like the Arduino, Uno and Nano for the water control. Uh, so if we have the top repo here uh, cloned onto the, so you clone that using Git uh, on top of your, or on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, so this is the route that you get from, uh, from cloning the Poseidon repo. And uh, we go into the water quality, uh, the browser or the sorry the editor that i'm using here is uh, emacs uh, but there are other linux tools like uh, nano or or vi that you, that you can use also in headless mode so you don't have any user interface from some in that sense so this is i'm doing ssh into the raspberry pi and that is what we see here now um, and um, when uh, coming down into the water quality we have uh, just a serial to MQTT. So this is the thing that is running on on the Raspberry Pi in in a, in a Docker container. So it's a Python program that is basically just republishing everything that is going on on the serial port. It's gonna send it up to the MQTT gateway, and for the pond control, it's the also acting on things that are coming from the MQTT. So it's a bridge between serial to uh, MQTT basically. And uh, so if we leave that, but um, there's one interest, uh, one key aspect here. I mean, this one is is reading from the the serial port, blocking that. So once that service is up and running, before we can program the firmware, we need to stop that that service. Um, and if you look into this um, um, the, the firmware catalog, you will see a, a command here, and there's a disclaimer there or something that say that you need to stop the that serial to MQTT program first before, or, or otherwise you will not be able to upload anything to, to, your, uh, uh, to your device here. 
But if we go down to the actual software here in the source catalog, and this is something very simple. And um, uh, this is the, the only th in the whole program basically. And uh, it's based on, on the sketch uh, from uh, the white box labs for, for just reading the uh, sensors continuously. And um, so if we go to the, I'm going to the top here, uh, all the boards are, are being defined. Uh, they have already numbers assigned to them if they are in uh, uh, ITC mode, uh, which you want to use here. So you don't want to have them in serial mode, uh, but uh, they come usually in, in uh, ITC mode, I think. Um, but yeah, you see the different sensors, all five of them. If you want to remove one of them, um, you can do that, but it will work also if, uh, if you if you don't, I mean, you, you can have uh, just one pH sensor and this should still work. Um, and it continuously does readings and for those uh, devices that has co temperature compensation like pH, for example, it will take the last uh, temperature reading and use that while translating or, or adjusting pH values. Um, and then once it continues to do this, it will then just uh, publish this to uh, um, to the cloud. And in this case, it's not the cloud; it's uh, it's uh, the um, RTD or sorry, the um, it's going to just be sending it over the serial port here. So it's um, it doesn't do anything here, um, and um, that is because we are already doing. Uh, writing this to the serial port when when doing the readings and uh, so we get uh, um, the, the the a tuple of uh, you see this uh, a start uh, starting bracket here and uh, then we have the se sensor name if it's a ph value etc and then we send the value and then it a finishing uh, bracket so continuously we will print out the to the standard out instead but um, if you would want, like to add something else, you could just add that to this upload to cloud function. Um, yeah, so that's that's the scheme. Um, this one is continuously producing uh, the sensor values every uh, three seconds, I think it is, uh, default timeout. And then, uh, then it just uh, continuously republishes this to the MQTT gateway. So yeah, that's the, the basic setup for the, for the software. So uh, very little programming, and uh, like I said, if you need to to upload this, stop the service, and then yeah, you do a um, platform IO uh, is is something that you need to install here to be able to program, and uh, then you upload it to a port, and uh, and then you uh, then you just stop this and and start your uh, serial to MQTT server again. Now we have the, the probes in place so we can start to measure the, the water quality. Thank you for watching.